do you have a great admiration for people who don't even exist? Do you know histories of fake worlds better than you know your own? Do you geek out? If so, geek out with us here now. It's the Geek For All Show. It is indeed the Geek For All. How's it going, folks? I am your host, Geek Meister. With me is Professor Weirdfuck. Hello. And our head panelist, Sam. Hello. And we've got a, uh, a very short but very special episode for you tonight. Tonight we're going to be talking Killing Joke. We all went to go see it uh, during its theatrical release. Um, I, I think the overall impression is wonderful. Right, I, I I would say on the whole it was it was great, but we're gonna get into like the nitty the nitty details of like where we think some things may have gone askew because there's been a lot of controversy in particular about the first 30 minutes. So I think we should go ahead and just start right there, get that out of the way, and then really focus I think on on the good qualities of this film because there was a lot of them. So the big the big controversy is of course the first 30 minutes, Batgirl. Some people didn't even like that it was done in the first place. I, to, to them, I say hogwash. Like I think, yeah. do, I think doing some focus on Batgirl uh, to kind of remind us of like where, what what the stakes are at a little bit. Um, what was a good idea? Now, where they potentially started going a little bit awry is their attempt to sort of make this weird connection to the animated universe as opposed to kind of really sticking with the killing joke well also i've been hearing like there's like i don't keep up with too much of the animated stuff except for stuff that's based off comics like like the killing joke um but i guess there is like an animated movie universe and there's an animated like tv show universe yep i don't know it just it's insane but okay uh like I understand, like, according, like, they're trying to make this tie to, like, the animated TV show, obviously, with having the kind of Well, chemistry. and having the, having the voice actors. I think well, we need to start there. The, the voice actors that they picked are because those were the voice actors from the 90s television series. Right, and that's great. I think that's awesome because that's what people kind of envision those characters to sound like. However, they don't want it to be based off of the animated series. The people that are going to see The Killing Joke, they wanted a comic book movie. Like, mm-hmm. comic book movie, based off the comic book, not, like, reimagined for a new universe. Now, doing the first 30 minutes for, like, a Batgirl, Barbara Gordon thing, I thought was a great idea. Otherwise, it would have been too short of a movie. Yeah, yeah. Um, it would have been too short of a movie, and, okay, so for anybody listening that hasn't seen it, obviously you're going to get spoiled. But Oh, yeah, spoiler alerts of the <laughs> like ass on this one. Yeah. yeah. So, that being said, without the first 30 minutes... Her being shot would have had no emotional connection. Yeah. It would have just been, you would have seen her show up. Like, it would have been her apartment, they show up, shit goes down, and then that's it. We would have had no emotional connection. Because Batgirl, like Batgirl was at least somewhat relevant at the time. Relevant enough right. in, a, in, in, in a way where it was, like, really sad because nobody ever took her seriously. She was always sort of this goofy sidekick who was kind of, you know, a sidekick of a sidekick. Like, lesser than Robin type of sidekick, you know what I mean? Yeah. And the fact that she was was the one that the Joker picked then made that really, really barbaric. Right. But without that kind of context to remind us of that... Um, but then again, you know, uh, as far as we know, Joker doesn't know that she's back role. Could just be the Commissioner's daughter. That's the, just that's, the Commissioner's daughter. Right. But, then, then but again, at the same time, we still wouldn't have had still, an emotional connection. Exactly. No, yeah, same. So they wanted they wanted to establish the, the, the same kind of triggering mechanism that they had back in the day because you right. thought of her as this innocent, sweet girl. And now there are those of us who... You know, know her from the New 52, where she's a badass because it's post all of this stuff and post her like getting better and stuff. Yeah. And so you needed to repaint her in the context of kind of the the girl who didn't take it all so seriously, and then the girl who you know really was kind of out to have a good time. And and I think that did need to get repainted. So I think that was and again, like you said, it would have been too short without it. So we needed the Batgirl thing. Right. But here's where it goes awry, and here's the spoiler if you haven't seen it. Batgirl and Batman fuck, okay? Yeah. Um, they have and sexual relations. <laughs> his penis goes into her vagina. Although not on screen. Her because that, that would... Whoa! Oh, no, but they did have a panning shot of her taking her shirt off. Because yes. that was super necessary. And yes. You know what? It almost makes me feel like 
Was the, like after seeing the entire thing, it was like, is that what you use the R rating for? Yeah. I mean, yes. You didn't yeah. even throw in a fuck or like you didn't show any titties like for the pictures and stuff like that. Not saying I want to see anime titties, but that's how it was. <laughs> well, that no, was no, the whole no, that, that's exactly what my impression of it is. Because that's the other thing. On, on the later part of it, when when the actual scene that we all were actually wondering about, the, the thing that we thought might actually be the controversy behind all this came up, it was like... You guys backed up hard, man. Yeah. They literally, because literally all Joker does is he unbuttons one button from her shirt, and then and then, and then like kind of like vaguely like hints at what he's gonna do. Like, he doesn't even take a picture. Yeah. You don't even ever actually see him take the picture. That iconic shot of him taking the picture with that creepy ass grin never actually appears in that film. Yeah. And that's kind of wrong, frankly. Yeah. And if you honestly, if you were going to heighten the sexuality of the film at any point, do it at that point where it is gross. And and let me let me get on a deeper level because I really thought about this and, and like why it bothered me so much. 1985. Back when the first when Killing Joke first came out. That is a climate where rape allegations were still not being taken seriously in society. And Alan Moore decided he was going to take a really gritty look at that kind of fuck pattern and that behavior and do something that wasn't even rape but was so on the same level that it was disgusting and made you nauseous. Yeah. And to take that away, to pull back on that, and then sexualize her in a kind of rocky fanboy kind of way. Still, yeah. That is... Ew. Yeah. I think that made me... I think the first 30 minutes, like, when they're screwing and all that, I think that made me more uncomfortable than the actual killing joke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because there were, so, there were so many unnecessary shots of this animated body of, like, they would pan... Like, there's one point she's jogging down the oh, street. Oh, yeah, no, totally, And they yeah. pan up her ass and up her body and then watch her stretch and then she goes into her apartment to answer the phone. It was a good 30 seconds of unnecessary bullshit. Yeah. Well, it, okay, they do they do kind of do that in the comics though. Like in, in, the, in the actual killing joke, they, right. they, they kind of point out like her sexuality blooming. Like he, he does that intentionally earlier on. Like he does use that jogging scene to do that. It's not quite as specific as all that. I agree it was a little bit overboard, but they're, they, they, they are actually, you know, pulling from from the source material on that one, if I at least as far as I recall. Um, and however, to to do that, and then again, hold back on the actual part, yeah. the actual horrible part of it, the the part of it that Alan Moore wanted. No well, man, like they, they didn't do anything like that with him jogging or any scenes like that. Wasn't there? Wasn't there opening right scene? Opening scene is when he goes to uh, Arkham Asylum, and that's not the real Joker. That's opening scene, and then the next scene is Joker at the door. Oh and then shit, blam. you're right, you're right. She's still wearing that same outfit like she had just been out for a jog, but... They don't really sexualize it Yeah, they don't sexualize in, it in until, any way, you're until right. Until she gets... Until she actually gets assaulted. Yeah, 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 you're right. No, you're totally right, I forgot. Um, that... Okay, so yeah, they did definitely, like, over the... Gross. Yeah, it was just, um, it was almost like this creepy vibe of, like... I don't know, and, like, I don't know the ages. Like, she's obviously, because she's, a, you know, she has a, a full-time job, and she, you know, you kind of pinpoint her age-ish, and we don't necessarily know Bruce's age-ish, but it was almost, like, like, creepy uncle, like, creepy. Yeah. It was just, like, yeah, the first 30 like minutes a, was he's creepy. like a, uh, like, not, like, a father figure or, a, like, an uncle yeah. type of thing. Like, he was, or a big brother. Well, uh, yeah. Like, okay. You know? I, okay. Hey, well, here, here's, here, okay. I, ha I have to, I do have to say this much. Now, I don't know why they wanted to connect it to the animated year. I mean, I guess because they were using the voice actors and stuff, and so they wanted that extra little bit of connection, and right. they wanted to make her feel more... You wanted more sympathy toward her again when she got shot and everything and make it a bigger deal for Batman and blah, 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 blah. And in the animated universe, they do get together. Right. That is a thing. It's established canon from that universe. Yeah. They do get together, and they are a couple for a significant period of time. So I can understand that if you're going to go from that vector doing that, like actually having that sexual tension come up, that's fine. I think it was handled poorly, though. I think that, first of all, they didn't necessarily need to have sex. If they were going to have sex, you, you didn't need the shirt rip off. Like, no. you could have just panned up immediately. You definitely didn't need the gargoyle staring down at That was just <laughs> weird. Yeah. That was just it like, was. am I supposed to laugh at that? I don't even know how to respond. 
on to this. Um, and yeah, that that really, you know, that that was the thing is that I think that they handled this thing badly. The and more was, we're talking about it, the more I'm hating this movie. Like this is, <laughs> but it's not it's such, lie. <laughs> but it's such small detail. It's a couple it of is. small decisions that were made. The last. 30 minutes of that movie. Gold. Yeah. Because it's killing you. Okay, and hang on, on. And let's... uh, Here's the thing. I don't want to, like, get tyrannical on this, because we are talking about a couple of parts. I think there were some poor decisions, but I don't think it's decisions that we've seen outside of, like, some unfortunate norms that do take place. But unfortunately, it's still 2016. This... And I said this when when it was over, was that I feel like the writing and the way that they portrayed her was very much 1985. Yeah. Well, it felt lazy. That, well, or are they trying to actually go after the stylization? But still, you can be, it felt lazy and it felt like something that had already been done. If you want to make her and grow her as a character, I was, I was just waiting. So when she's beating the shit out of, so when Batman's flus- like fumbling around in that um, shipyard trying to catch I don't remember the guy's name. Uh, Paris. Yeah. Yeah, I think Paris. Paris is you know, and she yeah. comes roaring in on her motorcycle, and she's beating the shit out of this guy. I'm waiting for her to grab him by the fucking shirt and throw him at Batman's feet and go done and walk away. Yeah. Instead of and like that, because that was still her turning point, and it could still have been a turning point without the bullshit high school college drama. Of, yeah. of the, you know, oh, it wasn't a big deal that we had sex, and it shouldn't have been a big deal. It totally wasn't a big deal to me if it's not a big deal to you. Yeah. Kind of thing. It just felt like from from the frustration of not, from the frustration of some, you know, they, they pat themselves on the back like, oh, yeah, we got, you know, we got her of another story and all this jazz. It just felt like it wasn't innovative at all. No. It was something that has been done so many times. That, and I get pay, you know, I get paying respect to the original stuff and the, obviously the original comic and you know the original animated series, but they still change things that they could have made it. I feel like they could have made it a little bit better. I, I, I feel like they just. I think. I think that ultimately what they were striving for was fine. I don't think that they were going for anything in particular that was offensive. I think that no. they just could have handled it more tastefully. I think that there was a lack of taste in the way what they were trying to go for was handled. And I think that's what it surmounts to. I don't, I, you know, you, I, and you really do have to be, be careful about, like, you know, whether or not, like, something is, you know, viciously being painted some way or right. it kind of just comes off that way. And, you know, be fair to the creators, to, you know, if they sort of just made some mistakes. And I think that's what sure. happened here is that they just made some mistakes, honestly. Yeah. Um, but that's what sucks is the mistakes they made in that first half hour made it so that everybody who was a fan went, oh, that half hour was bullshit and wasn't necessary. We, yeah, which is just not the case. Which is definitely because because let's talk about what was good about that first half an hour because yeah. there was a lot of it there was actually. A lot of good that stuff. was it was an interesting story. Didn't totally fit as super nicely as it could have with the Joker. They could have tweaked some elements of that to make it better with the killing joke a little bit. Yeah, because it sort of did feel like this whole other lump on. Like it did. That, that's the thing. It 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 wasn't smooth, but. It really did showcase this very young, enthusiastic Barbara, very full of hope, something that we needed to see after seeing post-Oracle Barbara in the New 52 recently. Um, And also, uh, I can't remember his name, but her sassy gay friend, can he come back in the comic book? Yeah, oh my god, he was awesome. I love him. I think he's, I think, so I didn't catch his name originally, I think that's Mitch. That sounds and right. And I'm pretty sure it's pl- he's played by Nolan North. Because he sounds really familiar, too. Um, <laughs> oh I love him so much. That is, he was I did, the best. I did not realize how much how much Barbara needs a sassy gay friend until I saw but that. I'm like, oh my god, him. yes! Yes! It was pretty phenomenal. Yes. <laughs> it was pretty good. Yeah, yeah, no. Sassy gay friend. Yes. Sassy gay friend. And, and again, I, I think, um, again, they, they should have made a bigger deal about her coming in and saving Batman. Yeah. Totally. But the fact that they had her come in and save, save Batman, Batman and prove that she, like, could get involved even if she wasn't over her head. Yeah. And everything. Very true. Um, yeah. I think it was a good turning point to the, oh, that's that's the downward spiral. Yep. That they had that conversation about that point of no return. And that, I think that was a very good point. Mm-hmm. And I think having it end that way was, I think, was very good. Yeah, it was. No, it, it, it ended super strong and... Um, 
And ultimately, again, if you tweaked a couple things about the story, I think, you know, one of, one of the biggest reasons that it didn't meld into it um, is because they, for some reason, really modernized, uh, like, the aesthetic of, of the first half an hour. Like, I thought that there, too. Were, there were cell phones, and, and not, like, just cell phones, like, like, smart phones, smart phones screens yeah. and shit. Yeah. And it was kind of like, in the, you realize in the next scene, she's about to pick up, like, the most 80-looking house phone that you yeah. can possibly imagine. Like, you know, that one with that weird curve at the bottom yep. of it for, like, no reason at all? Like, yeah. it's just... But then, just, but then yeah. later on in Killing Joke, you get flashbacks of the Joker, and it feels like it's, like, 1920s gang. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I was like, wait, wait where are well, that's where just, are that's we? Just, that's just Alan Moore, though. Um, no, yeah. but at the same time, well, I mean, like, also, he's, the Joker's not that old. No, exactly. No, well, I mean, it, well, Batman's a part of that story too. That, that's what kind of confused me. That Batman yeah. part of that story. No, in in the comic, they have it uh, like black and white, like that kind of mm. flashbacky. It's just like slummy Gotham. Yeah, that's, that, what that's it's the thing. Gotham to be. always looks like it's stuck in the '40s a little bit, and that's yeah. kind of always supposed to be the. And vibe. I, I think that's what the like the bad guys, like the two the two guys that take him to the factory. Yeah. I think because it was so just stereotypical 1920s like bootlegger gangster that I was super thrown off by like the wait a second what decade are we in well it's always supposed to be a little bit unclear that's part right. of it too that's they're always it. supposed to be stuck in the 1940s and it's always supposed to be a little bit unclear as to like what the decade is supposed to be and um you know just uh uh but but this is also again like why that first half an hour was weird because aesthetically they didn't go for that in any kind of way whatsoever right. and the things that were kind of modern in the killing joke like that phone didn't even match like again like you could have still done like the cell phone waiting in the car for her but why did his picture like why did his image have to show up couldn't it have just been like like push the top button right an old and school flip phone it could have even kind of looked similar like those old school satellite phones because it kind of looked like that in the first place but if it didn't have like a screen and just a huge like number pad on it like that would have looked fine like it would have and it would have meshed better again if you're going for that connection to the animated series it would have right. looked like something out of that you know what i mean like they just they just there were these little details with that you can you can tell that they had some really good ideas with the first half an hour and then it turned into a rush job yeah. i think yeah. is what it boils down to yeah. is that that first half an hour was a rush job and honestly guys like it was just like a you know as a fan I would have waited another year. Yeah. Oh my or god. Something, yeah. Or something. Yeah. To, to do that correctly. Well, also, um, why a lot of people like I understand why a lot of people were disappointed in the animation, but it's like, well, well, what do you expect? Like, oh, you can't, if, you can't do you the actual do... Alan Moore look. You can't animate that. Like, yeah. it's gonna wind up looking like a Monty Python sketch. Yeah. I mean. But yeah, I mean, there's always gonna have... be. Yeah. But they did, they but, could but, have had a little bit more detail to it. The art I like. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not pissed off about it. Really. But you can see where other people were wrong. Like because yeah. the Killing Joke is so iconic. Like you would want to go all out for that. I think they did in many ways with that artwork. I think they really they they got as much of more style into there as they possibly could fit, considering that they just needed to the two look clean and animated correct. Because like the moment that they really went heavy with the more styling, like. It is very like kind of jaw hingy sort of like 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 a Monty Python like cartoon mm -hmm. if animated, and it would have to be like that if you wanted that like level of like detail and everything, and it, it would wind up kind of like having that like on you you'd reach the uncanny valley, you know yeah. what I mean? That's right. the thing. There's a certain level of detail where you, in animation where you reach that uncanny valley, which maybe for the Killing Joke might have been all right, but it also would have been a lot of effort for a huge risk on that level because it yeah. could have like turned out looking not correct so I can kind of see where you know they they would hesitate on doing something like that and I think that pulling it back in the way that they did work I think the detail was great like really like honestly I thought that um, considering the animation style that they chose to go with in order to try to balance it out I think they really they got a lot of more flavor in there and you know it, it you, you definitely got more animation going on than you do in any typical you know Superhero series. Yeah. Like, the level of detail is really incredible. Especially like that that shot where like all of like the lights light up at the circus and stuff and with China. Yeah. That yeah. looks spectacular. Yeah. Yeah. What was it into the same depth of detail as Alan Moore? No, of course not. But man, you can recognize it so hard. Like it, it, it brought that image back to you so very clearly when they did it. And I think oh, that was yeah. kind of the idea, you know? Yeah. They couldn't recreate it, but they could bring you back there. Yeah. And I, I think they, they really did do that. Um, 
and, and again, they're, I, I think that they, um, which again, for, for being that they were really hapdashery about the first half an hour, I'm really disappointed that they didn't decide to balls up and take some risks with the actual killing joke part of it and yeah. held back on that scene. Cause, cause, and again, I think they were just going for, well, we don't want to be offensive. Well, not doing that was actually the offensive part because you've totally taken away from what that was supposed to be doing, especially in light of what you chose to do. That first half an hour wouldn't even be half as bad for me if they had actually gone through with right. with everything in the second yes. half. Because then it was like, all right, you have to add shit, but the second half is perfect. Well, now you've got almost perfect and this first half an hour where it wound up coming off offensive in its own light. It's like, well... So you guys decided to to not risk it here so you can risk it in the beginning, basically. And you didn't even recognize that's what you were doing. Right. Because again, I think I think it was a rush job. I think that they I don't know why. I don't know why it had to be a rush job. I guess because yeah. fans were really excited and they really wanted to just kind of like please everybody and get it to them as soon as possible. But no, like I said, I, I really I would have waited another year. Yeah, I would have waited too. I would have. And it meant it would be amazing. Like uh... But again, um, so so now we've we've we talked about some of the some of the downturns of it. Let's let's talk about what was fabulous about this movie. Oh, the there was voice so acting, much. Dude. Mark Hamill doing these lines was it's a oh, he's so good. It was a whole other level, dude. Like I, there was something there was something I didn't even know was missing with those lines until I heard them in Mark Hamill's voice. Um, there was a small if you saw it in the theater. The Fathom event, they had a small interview with Mark Hamill, and he was ta- he talked about obviously being Luke Skywalker and that establishing his career, and then wanting to be a part of the animated series. But he actually wanted to audition for somebody else. He didn't want to be Joker because that he felt that that would ruin his image as Luke Skywalker, as the good guy. Well, I, I think, I, and not even that. I think he thought more that because he had the image of the good guy it would right. never work as the Joker I think it's, it's kind of the way that he and then they came back and they're like no, no they, we they, want they you want as the Joker no, <laughs> anyway he's like I don't I don't know if I can do that but okay and he's become one of the most iconic Jokers I mean that that for me is the Joker's voice like Heath Ledger does in my opinion and I mean I have to, I have to give uh, Jared his, his due diligence so I'll see Suicide Squad and make my judgments on this but as of right now Heath Ledger I think is my favorite live action performance but yeah. when I think of the Joker's voice like what the Joker is really supposed to sound like in the typical Batman universe Mark Hamill man yeah. all the way because um, well, he seems to be able to do the the almost the sane side because especially with Killing Joke with the the balancing of the the guy before the accident and the, the guy after the, 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 yeah the comedian's voice for Killing Joke was un, like inspired yeah. I, I can't even because you could hear the Joker still mm-hmm. but but just on certain words when he'd get frustrated or excited about certain things, you could you, you could hear right. the beginnings of what that voice would be. Mm-hmm. But it sounded like so much more of like a normal guy instead of the caricature that that voice kind of has. It's 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 so theatrical and big. Exactly. Yeah, and his is just kind of wimpy and defeated. Yeah, yeah dude. And, like, human. Like, oh, and human. And human. Yeah. And Mark's able to yeah. And Mark's able to balance it. To the point, it almost sounds like two different people. It, 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 no, it really does. That's the, that's the thing. Like, you, you, it's like certain words you can hear it because you know it. But I mean, like, you could if you, if you showed somebody who had never heard his voice before or anything and didn't and, know it was him or anything, you probably I don't think yeah. they guess. I think they might kind of be like, that, that kind of sounds familiar, sort of, you know. But right. like, you could throw him for a while. And again, I think he actually like had that voice more in like that like totally separate range. I think he picked certain words to really kind of like oh, sure. highlight the Joker on. I think that was very intentional on his part, and and it was it was fantastic. Um, now, it, it, as as wonderful and and spectacular as uh, as he was, I do have to also give major credit to having Kevin Conroy on the yeah. other side, man. Oh yeah, the exchanges. Oh man, just like because that—that that for me is the Batman voice too. 
Now, this this guy who's been doing it for um, the, the the movies that have been coming out recently for the uh, they're kind of new Fifty Two related. Um, when the the uh, I can't remember his name, but um, whenever you see the. Uh, Batman with sort of like the under chin thing going on that mm. comes to the point. Yeah. Um, there's kind of been this one dude who's been doing those, and he's 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 actually got some contention because he's they've been doing some really really interesting things with his voice, and like I I, I don't know I'm gonna have to give him like another few years and, and oh, maybe he might Oh, the new Batman, have... the new Batman voice, like yeah. he was doing the Justice League ones. Yeah, 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 yeah I yeah, like yeah. him, dude. I like him. I like him a lot, lot. dude. He's really he, good. He, he might be a contender for um for Conroy's spot, but as of but but for right now still. When I think of Batman, like I totally think Kevin Conroy, mm-hmm. like that is that is the Batman voice to me, like just you know deep and and broken but eternally wise, you know, right. and and scary. Yeah, and not really like there was no points where it was it was weird because we've had you know all the actors that have played Batman over the years, like obviously certain movies, a lot of the Tim Burton movies were a little more comical, a little more you know. Yeah. S- cheesy but like even when you get to the you know the batman begins and this we all make fun of it where's rachel exactly but there was no point in killing joke where i thought it was weird or thought that there was a point where i was gonna laugh at something he said no no it was it was exactly it was exactly the voice yeah. that you needed for that Ew, oh man it, <laughs> I, I can't i can't express enough uh how those lines with with mark hamill and kevin conroy just did something for this story and, and that's that's why ultimately like it with even with all of its problems i give this movie a b plus yeah. like 100 percent. like i mean we're like the, those things that we're talking about we do find like pretty like ah oh, guys like it did hurt quite a bit but the rest of it was so good in yeah. comparison i mean it it was uh it, it was just, it was really phenomenal. I, I highly recommend getting it when it comes out on Blu-ray and DVD and stuff. Um, it's worth having in your collection. It's it's a great watch. It's going to get you excited to go back and, and, and reread um, The Killing Joke again and, and, and relive it all. And, um, you know, just, that, that's that's like the main thing, I think, that people need to remember when you're, when you're viewing these movies and stuff and, and trying to formulate an opinion you can like something and still admit that there are problems with it oh, like oh, that's, yeah. that's the thing and that's oh, the, yeah, the, the, this, is a, this is a great example of it where overall this was a fantastic film I enjoyed it I went out of that theater very happy I, I, I don't know about you guys but I, I came out of that theater very happy for the most part yeah. um, and I think that that's just you know you always got to be like you can enjoy something still note its flaws and be able to come up with, you know, a, a reasonable conclusion instead of just like, oh, it's terrible, it's the worst thing ever yeah. for these reasons, or it's like, oh, shut up, you're just being over, like, well, no, you're you're both right, but you're both wrong. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. You know, like, things, things can have problems and be great, and things can be absolute pieces of shit and still have like things about no, them that really, you know yeah. at, at the, the core really opposite like, yeah. Batman versus Superman yeah. like <laughs> that was you know in many ways a steaming pile of shit but there were some good things coming out of that and mm-hmm. I don't know about you guys but I'm excited about that Justice League oh, trailer oh, yeah, we'll trailer. talk more about that well, yeah, we, time, yeah we will um, we've got a D&D session that we gotta get to right now um, but we mm-hmm. wanted to make sure that we talked about this because it was a phenomenal film Killing Joke go check it out uh, this has been the Geek for All I am Geekmeister joined by Professor the weird fucking Sam as always. You guys have yourselves an excellent evening. Bye-bye. The music for the Geek for All show has been provided by Fat Street Beats, Ben Sound, and Purple Planet. Please support their individual pages.